Hey, you guys see it? See it? Right there. The NR200. Finally, it came in. Finally. I've been waiting for this motor to do a comparison video with my Toyan and in the background there is my Defender that I had the Toyan in. Um, I have been waiting, what, two months since Engine DIY initially told us we were going to get these or at least have them shipped out to us. So um, I'm going to make a video kind of going through the differences on these motors. Uh, and uh, hopefully you guys get some information from it if you guys are planning on upgrading that or if you guys have a similar build or maybe another truck you guys have the uh, toy in in and we're looking for you know a little bit more power uh, a little bit of water cooling you know the differences uh, mainly between these engines is the water cooling and the bigger displacement uh, obviously the single carburetor which is is gonna make a huge difference in tuning um, I think for me because the dual carburetors are kinda driving me nuts on the Toyan is very sensitive on the carburetor so um, if you stay tuned in the next video you guys will get some information that might help you out may not or maybe you guys can give me some information that will help me out if you guys have already messed with this motor so uh, stay tuned peace so here you have your carburetor um, I've worked with a lot of nitro engines you know with obviously much <clears throat> I would say more defined carburetors this is very basic uh, I mean obviously it'll run it'll get the job done you got your standard needle on the side your mid you know you have your idle stop screw your high uh, not quite sure what this one this little one's here for I don't know if that's another another end stop for the carburetor I mess with it and kind of see what that does uh, but a single carburetor is definitely going to make things easier, at least for tuning. <clears throat> and I believe you might be able to actually flip this carburetor around, this manifold, and actually point it downward. And I'm not 100% sure, but I might try it just to see. Because uh, that might cause a problem too. Because when this is mounted here in the truck, it's obviously going to probably run straight into the hood. Uh, so that's another challenge. Uh, one of the main challenges that I wanted to kind of talk about for anyone who gets this engine is the flywheel and the pilot shaft that comes off of the crank so on the toy end you're actually able to buy the clutch kit that they actually sell on their site uh, I believe engine DIY sells it also sterling kit and it makes it very easy to just adapt a standard you know nitro clutch on there let me see if I can get this one on here for you to show you if it comes out of here so you have standard just you know nut that screws onto the pilot shaft and you know you can run your clutch bell on there with the bearings threads on there perfectly and the flywheel already comes with the toy and has already the holes that you need to run the actual clutch on there the two pluck clutch which is you know makes it a lot easier so the problem we're running into is the actual shaft that's on the NR200 is much bigger uh, well I wouldn't say much bigger but slightly bigger and this does not fit on there it doesn't screw on at all so I have a couple clutch kits that I've actually purchased in the past um, to try to adapt because I know the clutch has always been kind of a troublesome issue on the toy end slipping and trying to get the power down and these actually won't work there's no way because of how short uh, this shaft is and by the way this flywheel is actually just held in similar to the toy end it's keyed so you can see the little key in there and it just slides on and locks in there um, so that's easy uh, I remember I believe it was on the FS 100 a single cylinder that was actually screwed on it was kind of a pain to get off but regardless this is going to be an issue now they do actually give you the pin orientation for a three plug clutch which is actually nice because uh, that's obviously a little bit of a smoother 
engaging clutch. You can also, you know, lock it locks in a little harder. But again, this is the problem. This is so short that you can't really do anything. Now I have some actual clutch uh, nuts that go on there, but again, these are meant for a pilot shaft that has the extended end that lets you, you know, slide the clutch bell on so that the clutch bell sits on there like that. And you can run it in a car. So what you would need is something similar to this, but obviously the correct thread and size. So I might have to browse around the web or if any of you know that I've already messed with this motor and found some way to adapt it, please uh, in the comments below let me know because it would definitely help me greatly and I'd appreciate it. That's probably the main hurdle of me trying to get this engine uh, running or at least in the toy end for now uh, other than that everything is is pretty similar other than that you know it's a little taller as you can see there it does sit a little higher it's a bit wider on the top uh, I may get into maybe a disassembly to kind of show you guys uh, the differences and you know the the valve train and whatnot uh, even though I, I did pop this one off, it's very similar to the toy end. There's just a lot more room on the top of this. It's greased as well. It comes, you know, they put a, a decent amount of grease on the valve train. Um, what I like too is it does have a vent, which is kind of neat. Uh, I don't know if that's going to leak grease out or, or oil over time. Not sure. I mean, I only know when I start running this a bit. But. Uh, I actually made my own oiling. Obviously, I have a video about this where I run the oil from the crankcase into the actual valve train and then that runs back out to a catch can. Uh, what's interesting about this motor is it actually has these plates here. Now, this one doesn't do anything because um, this one literally just goes right out through there where the glow plug goes. Uh, so, I think this is more for, you know, just for show. So it looks cool and matches the other side. But uh, this is actually sealed up compared to the toy end that's, you know, open. Now, this does have a rubber seal inside. And it, for the most part, doesn't leak. But ever since I did, obviously, the oily modification, it tends to leak a little bit since the oil level is a little high, as you can see from where this... Uh, this needle coming out here where it drains so the oil basically gets up to about midway of that bearing before it actually starts pushing out um, I could have mounted this a little lower when I originally made it it could have helped with that but either way these engines leak uh, they leak through the crank the crank seals and the bearings in the crankcase I mean it's not it's very very small amount but it you know it adds up they're always gonna have some oil after a run with this motor no matter what so that's just expected uh, this one would be interesting because I noticed that it looks like they did pay attention a lot to to oil leaking um, and kind of definitely sealed these up and, and redesigned it much differently this looks like it's actually extended with a seal in there as well uh, to probably keep it from leaking now the crankcase, I'm not sure if you look in there, I'm not sure if you can see it there. It looks like there's a rubber seal in there. I have not opened the bottom end of this yet. Uh, I may, just because I'm curious, and I like opening things up and taking them apart. But I also, a little worried about the warranty. Uh, you know, obviously if you open these up, avoid your warranty especially when I have a video about it so <clears throat> at least when I figure out the clutch I might start kind of messing around tinkering and I'll you know I'll obviously make a video to show you guys if I do start taking it apart to kind of give you guys more information on the motor just so you guys know so if you all just want to start buying this one and use it you know you'll know exactly what you need to do to kind of adapt it to anything um, so far, that's that's pretty much uh, the main differences of this motor that I've seen until I actually run it and see how it runs. You know, this is uh, this is what I've gained from it. 
uh, just from looking at it and, you know, holding it in my hand. It still has the same, you know, crankcase vent at the bottom like the uh, L200. Uh, it does have a big idler, idler pulley right up here in the front. And what's also nice about this is, is if you could see, it's slotted. So you can actually adjust the tension of the belt which definitely makes things a lot nicer as the belt you know wears in it becomes a little looser you can adjust it so it's not so loose now that has been a problem for me on the L200 um, uh, originally the belt that I have on here is this is a newer belt and the original belt that I had on here was very loose. It, it was, I mean, you could kind of see it flapping around on here. Uh, and if you actually turn the engine in the opposite direction that it actually fires, the belt would actually come loose and, and hop a few teeth. I ordered uh, a belt from Sterling Kit. Uh, when I got it, it didn't even, it was so tight. <laughs> it was basically pulling the pulley like bending it inwards like it was actually at an angle um that it was pulling it in so hard and i the motor would barely even start it was so tight so i'm like oh this isn't right so you know after a good email chain of me explaining that they sent me the wrong belt and and them telling me that you know i ordered the wrong belt even though it said nr 200 or sorry l 200 you know timing belt and I showed them the pictures sent them the documentation or whatnot they kept saying I ordered the wrong belt finally they sent me another belt and it was the same thing same issue the belt was way too tight it wouldn't fit on the motor uh, finally I ended up just ordering one from engine DIY I got that one it was a little looser more to the specs obviously I think it was just a little tighter because it was new Definitely nothing like the one from Sterling Kit. I could barely get the Sterling Kit one on. Like, I had to really force it on. Finally, this one slipped on. And after a little bit of running, it, it loosened up a bit and it was fine. But, man, for, for as much as I tried on the other belt, that thing was just way too tight. And I, I think they just don't have the, the right specs on that belt. At least from the actual factory one that it comes with. But either way... These belts, if they wear out, it might be an issue. Uh, you might get one that's too tight that you won't be able to put on there. Or it's going to just be almost impossible to get it on there. So if any of you do get a belt or replacement belt that fits perfectly, have no problems, please let me know. Because uh, I like to keep some spares for this motor. Because, uh, you know, eventually these do wear out and they get loose. So, um, so that's basically it um, so far with this motor. Until I run it, you know, I can't really give much more information on this motor how it's going to run what it's going to do but there you have it that's both of them side by side very similar motors um i mean you could say they're almost identical uh which is kind of crazy since this one's water cooled um this one you know the toy in is just regular air cooled you know no fan so, you know, you kind of get a loss. You know, the fan, I'm sure you lose a bit of power with that spinning. The same power you'd probably be losing with it spinning the pump. So, um, we'll see what happens when I actually run it. And if I can get the actual clutch on this thing uh, to work, if I find an adapter that I can get it going, that'd be cool because I'd love to, you know, to test this engine out on the toy and see how it goes. Now, lengthwise... These are almost exactly the same, too, from front to back. So the clutch belt, if I keep it more or less in the same spec as the Toyin, it will actually line up perfectly with the transmission here. I shouldn't have a problem. Uh, I'm Who knows, I might have to make some small changes, obviously, to these holes, maybe to give me a little bit more slack to move the transmission around. But, um, you know, I won't know. I, and I may be able to actually adapt these headers. I think these might actually bolt straight up to the flanges here. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I'll tell you what they look. 
they look almost identical. Uh, so I'm going to try that too because I can at least retain the dual dual exhaust that I have on the Toyin now and just kind of keep it because I'm sure it's going to sound pretty nice. At least from what I've heard in videos of this NR200, it sounds very, very poppy, um, like a high compression engine. It sounds really, really nice. Uh, but, you know, the Toyin also sounds really good. Uh, so, you know, once I get all these things sorted out, I'll, I'll definitely make a video of it running and give you guys some more information if I do start tearing this apart to kind of take a look inside because of my curiosity but uh, that's for now at least what I've uh, seen in differences wise with these motors uh, even though they're very similar so if you guys have one or gotten one already and you guys want to add on to this please let me know if there's anything else if you've torn them apart or if you found any other fixes uh, or a adaptation for the clutch uh, even the starter motor I, I definitely need to uh, to get a smaller starter motor on this because the thing is just massive so I, I really hope I can find an equivalent to a brushless so I can kind of retain all the electronics too and make it a lot easier so uh, until the next video take care guys and thanks for watching